Hey guys, hope everybody's doing good out there this Saturday. And I wanted to make a video about a question that I got uh, regarding light primer strikes. Now the question was sent to me by someone named John Smith Jr. And he put this comment on my cocky gun store counter guy video. So you can read that question if you'd like to. Now the way the question is worded, I'm not for sure if he's already got the problem figured out and wants, just wants to pick my brain and see if I can diagnose it or if he's still having the issue. I think the question starts out, I know what it was, and then he goes on with, with what was, he was having an issue with with the gun. So let's go ahead and talk about light primer strikes in the Glock. Okay, when we go to diagnose something, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look right at the area of where the issue is happening and we are going to try to thoroughly rule that out before we move to the next step. Now the second step of phase two would be going to another area of the gun and looking at other issues that could be causing things to happen uh, where we're having the problem. So in other words, we're going to start with the striker, the striker channel, and that, and if, and if uh, we get through all those and we look at all those where there could be an issue and we check that all out thoroughly, then we move to other places on the gun that you might not have even thought of. So you might want to stick with me. This video is going to give you some good info of how else you could diagnose uh, light primer strikes. The first three things are pretty simple and pretty easy to look for to diagnose light primer strikes. Most people are going to know these things. Most people would tell you these things. But I'm going to go through them anyway uh, just to you know, give some of the newer guys an idea that may not know, uh, you know that much about guns yet or just maybe want the, want the info. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pull the striker and inspect the striker. thought I would show you all how to remove the striker. It's a very easy process. Once you field strip the gun, you take the slide like this and take something, a punch that's this size. This is the little Glock tool to push the pins out. And what we're going to do here is we're going to push up here on the rear of the striker, and we're going to put the punch right in here. This is the striker uh, channel sleeve right here, this black piece right here. We're going to put it in between that and this part of the striker that shows right there. And then what you're going to do is push down to relieve pressure pressure off of the slide plate cover. And then we're going to push that off with our thumb. And these parts aren't really under that much tension, so don't worry about it. And then we're just going to pull the striker out. What we're going to be looking for is we're just going to be looking at the end of the striker. We're going to be making sure that there's no burrs, anything like that. Just kind of giving it a visual inspection. Just making sure everything's good, nothing's flattened here. You can see the shape that it's in here. Let me go ahead and get a close-up view. It, it, this is stamped metal, guys. It's always going to have little imperfections in it. But for the overall part, you just want to make sure that, it is, uh, that it's looking the way that it should look, nice and flat. Now, this, is a good, this is a good striker. Okay, on to the next thing that I would suggest that you do, and you should do this from time to time anyway, after you shoot thousands of rounds. What you want to do is take a some kind of a spray cleaner, that has the straw with it, insert the straw into the can, put the can into the striker channel here, and you know where the striker comes out right here, there's going to be a small hole right there, and you're gonna spray and flush this out in there. You get all kinds of debris, little pieces of the uh, primer, little flakes that look like brass down in here. You get a lot of debris in there, but it takes a really, really long time to build up, guys and it's not something you have to do every range trip, but that's the second thing when you're trying to diagnose what's wrong with a gun that you would do. Now the third thing I would recommend, even though this is going to be rare, would be to change the striker spring right here. It's rare to wear one of these out, but if you bought the gun used like he said he did, you do not know if the previous owner put on a lighter spring on this striker. Some of these aftermarket trigger companies will send you a lightened striker spring to just try to shave a little bit of weight off of the trigger. And I don't think that's a good deal, guys. Always, I always say go with the OEM striker spring, but some guys may have changed this out and then before they sell you the Glock, they forget or they don't worry about it and they pull their Zev trigger or whatever kind of trigger they have, the aftermarket one, and they put back in the Glock trigger and they leave 
the striker spring, the lightened one, and that can definitely give you light primer strikes anytime you start playing with that. So that would be the third thing that I would look at and do uh, to check to see what's going on with light primer strikes. Now I'm gonna put the gun back together and we're gonna talk about a couple other things that could be the cause of light primer strikes. So if you've went over those three things that I just laid out and you find that you are still having light primer strikes in the Glock, I'm gonna give you a couple more places that we can look to try to correct this issue. Now when you have a light primer strike, you also want to look at the casing and see what the light primer strike looks like. This is gonna tell us a lot of information and it can be diagnosed almost by the way that the primer strike is, and I'm gonna explain that to you here in a minute. So there's two issues that can cause a light primer strike that aren't back here where the striker channel is. And those two issues are a tight extractor and or a weak recoil spring. Now, the tight extractor can cause the case not to seat fully and the gun not be fully into battery if it's out of spec. Just a little bit, okay? Would, that, would, that would be enough to give a light primer strike. A weak recoil spring that needs replaced could hold the gun just slightly out of battery to where you wouldn't even notice when you're looking down the sights and you're shooting at the range, and that would also cause a light primer strike. Now, I'm gonna tell you what it looks like on the light primer strike when you look at the round. If it's out of battery, it's gonna be light and off to the side. The strike is gonna be light and off to the side of the primer, not centered. If it's centered and light, then we know that there's some kind of, then we know it's some kind of debris that's in the way, if it's still exactly in the center. But off to the side, light primer strike in a Glock is going to mean it's out of battery in some way when the striker is going forward. Now there's also one other thing. Now this is very, very, very rare that this would happen, but it has happened, so I am gonna talk about it. The, the, one of the last ways that I would check if none of that works would be the striker channel sleeve. Now I'm gonna take this Glock apart again and I'm gonna show you that little part. Most guys don't even know that's in the gun and when you break down the, this entire gun, you won't even know it's there. It doesn't come out unless you purposely take it out. So I'm gonna show you that now. A little hard to show on camera, so I've already kind of got it set up. Uh, here's the orientation. This is the Glock slide upside down. There's where the barrel would come out here. And here is where I have removed the striker. Now, the striker channel sleeve is the piece you see down in here, right there. It's plastic, polymer, however you wanna call it but this is the striker channel sleeve. This has to be in there and it has to be seated right. Now that is, you can get it out, it's hard to take out and you can replace it and things like that. But if that is not seated correctly by somebody replacing one or from the factory, whatever, or it backed out just a little bit, that can cause the striker to not fully go forward and engage the round like it should. But that would be like, that's one of the rarest one guys that I know of for that to be the issue of having a striker issue, light primer strikes. So that would be worst case scenario. Um, you know, you play the lottery. If you ever have one of these channel liners that's not seated right or backed out on you, you might wanna go buy a mega millions lottery ticket because that's kind of the odds of that happening. It's not something that you'll probably ever see in your lifetime or hear about from any of your friends. But like I said, I just wanna mention it because it is something that could possibly happen. All right, John Smith Jr., I hope you enjoyed the video. You were the lucky one that gave the question that got a video made. I tell you guys all the time, if you give me enough of a substantial question that I think that it would pertain to my viewers and subscribers, I will actually do a video for you, even give you a shout out in the video. Now, I don't know if you had corrected the problem and you just wanted to see how much I know, or if you have not corrected the problem that yet. Please let me know in the comments down below, um, either way, and let me know what of those things that you tried and if any of it has worked for you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions, comments, concerns, post them below. This is DOF. I'll be back with you real soon.